Ryan Neiman, Brian Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. 630. W-M-A-L. 637 WMAL, Neiman, Ham, Wilson, and Trevor Maddich is in the house from a Redskin uh, with Comcast Sportsnet, ESPN. Hey. You got anybody else you're working for these days? Seems like you're working. If you're they don't send me a busy, check, busy I'm man. not working for them. So, no. You know, with uh, you, you being here in the studio and Brian Wilson... Uh, you guys are both like six, six, eight, I'm six, six nine. Four. I'm six four. Yeah, six four. Yeah, I, I feel like Spud Webb. You feel like Muggsy Bowes yeah. over there. I mean, <laughs> no. my goodness. It's not about in. size though. It's about leverage. Out in the hallway, just to show who was boss on yeah. the way in here. Right. Mary Catherine hit me in the sternum, yeah. and I, I'm just getting my breath back. I have a lot of heart. She, I'm the Rudy of tough. this team. She's small, but she's really intense. Yeah, I'm dense. Yeah. So football's back, thank goodness, and uh, they played some games last night. Redskins are playing tonight. Um, I was let's start off with uh, sexy Rexy Rex Grossman, oh, nice. <laughs> and his his comments this week uh, to Comcast Sportsnet, where the people actually pay you money, where he said that uh, he believes that uh, the Redskins are going to win the NFC East. Yeah, and that that created <laughs> such a firestorm. I mean, a guy that hasn't even won the starting job yet to come out and do what apparently is a Babe Ruth moment, right. pointing at the outfield wall, yeah. home run next pitch, or a Joe Namath, we guarantee we'll win the Super Bowl. That's not what he said. What he said was, I really feel like we can win the East. Mm-hmm. Well, That's a pretty reasonable statement. That's reasonable. And what an do you athlete? want your quarterback to say? Uh, really? Uh, uh, do you want him to say, you know, no. yeah, we win more than three games this year, I'll be happy, because we're really not. What do you want him to say? <laughs> yeah. Well, all right, I understand where you're coming from on that, but I, here's what I would say. I would say, don't say it at all. Well, that's fair, too. All right, just don't yeah. say it. Don't bring it up. I think we've got a pretty good team. You know, we may surprise some people. Uh, you know, we feel pretty good about our team. But, you know, saying that you're going to win the NFC East, to me, is just like, really? Yeah, when Carl Rove gets a hold of him for his Senate run after his football <laughs> career, that's how he'll respond to <laughs> message, questions like message that. Message discipline. Um, going into tonight's game with the short practice time they've had, what difference has it made? Obviously, there's been some news about Rex Grossman not being in shape. What difference has it made with the players that you've seen? Yeah, Mary Catherine, I've been out of practice pretty much every day, and and Rex Grossman is in good enough shape to do everything he needs to do. I think that's really overblown. But you make a very good point in that with the lockout, there were no OTAs, there were no off-season practices, and with a still new coaching staff, this is only the second year in the offense and defense in these systems, and with so many new players in, and with an unsettled quarterback situation, it really hurts teams like the Redskins that are trying to get all that put together. Now, on the flip side, the Steelers have a veteran team with with the long-standing systems on offense and defense, and so I would expect the Redskins to look more ragged tonight than the Steelers will, and I would not blame the Redskins for it. What they really need to see tonight is individual performances, and you bring up quarterback, which is the marquee position. And you know, I think Grossman's going to have a chance to really step up tonight. I, I always like when we get to talk about the Redskins to talk about the stewardship of this team by Daniel Snyder. Do you have strong feelings about about his either his ability to do the job or his ability not to handle the team well? I mean, a lot of people in this town have made a career out of hating Dan Snyder. Where are you on Dan Snyder? Where am I on Dan Snyder? Well, I don't have a dog in the hunt from a standpoint of I don't feel passionately to hate him or to back him. Either way. I look at it from a player's standpoint. Okay. And, and to me, early in his career as an owner, He did a lot of things that hurt players in the locker room. He didn't mean to. He didn't want to. I truly believe that Dan Snyder did not buy this team like some people claim because he wanted to run a fantasy team. No, I believe he bought this team because he wants to be seen as one of the great owners. He wants to be seen like Bob Kraft of the New England Patriots or, or the Roonies of the Steelers. That's what he wants to do. Hasn't really worked out that way. And he it? just didn't know how to do it. Yeah. But you can see him growing as an owner in recent years. Last year on Comcast, uh, I said that the, the two things he really needs to do to take the next step were to, number one, close his office door to the players. Don't let stars like Clinton Portis have a personal relationship with him because there is a perception in that locker room that the head coach is not the man who has final say over the football life of those players. They can go one up to the owner if they need to. There's resentment in the locker room because of that, even if it's not intended. The second thing he needed to do is allow continuity. 
They've averaged a new head coach every two years here. Yep. And even under Joe Gibbs, there was a rotating cast of offensive coordinators right. of over the four years Gibbs was here. And so what happens is they never have a chance to take three or four years and fully learn a system so that they can play with maximum speed up to their level of talent. They're always learning something new, always thinking it. So what happened here, I think, is that Shanahan, I yeah. believe, he will allow to be there for four or five years. I hope he does. And if he does, then you will have seen Dan Snyder take that next step towards the goal he's always wanted, but now that he is is you know learning more how to get there. And you've seen evidence that, that Snyder is stepping back and allowing Shanahan to really take control of the team? Absolutely on the field. But also keep this in mind. There's no owner in the NFL that's better than Dan Snyder at promotion and more willing to invest. Dan Snyder would have millions of dollars more in his own pocket if he didn't really care about winning. And so when you combine those two attributes of Snyder with let the football people just do it and do it for four or five years for continuity's sake, now you have a package that will be very hard to stop. All right. Why should a Redskins fan be excited? Why should they think that maybe Sexy Rexy is right or Doey Grossy, as some people are calling him? Oh, <laughs> Grossy. Wow. Why, why that should, is a cheap that shot. That is That's, mean. Sorry no. about that. You know, if he were here, he would, like, belly bump you right <laughs> yeah. now. And I, I, I still hold a grudge with him after the Orange Bowl victory over my Terps uh, several years ago. But why, why should they be – why should they be – Optimistic. I mean, what, what, last year was, hey, we've got McNabb now, we've got a new head football coach, maybe things really are turning around. What's, what's, what's the excitement about this with this year's team? Yeah, for the record, Rex Grossman does not look fat. He does not <laughs> okay, look fat. Okay, all right. Okay, the, um, uh, here's why to be excited. Because it looks like they're actually building the team now from the ground up the way they need to. In other words, instead of going out and grabbing the, the big name high star free power, agent right. past his prime, plugging him in and expecting him just to produce the numbers for you that he did for somebody else. Right. Instead of doing that, look at the last three drafts. Two pass rushing linebackers, an offensive lineman. Second round in this draft, another defensive lineman. I mean, they're building this thing from the ground up. This year, they did not go out and overspend on free agents. They got younger, they got a little more talented, but they didn't reach when the right guy wasn't there. It'll take several years to build that up, but the reason to be excited now is not necessarily because we see the Super Bowl at the end of the season. Could catch lightning in a bottle? Probably not. But because now you've got this team being built in the same way that the Steelers, the Eagles, and the Patriots are being built. It'll take a little time, but it's being done correctly. All right. Well, I'm a Georgia Bulldog, and not even I took that shot at Rex Grossman. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Trevor, for being here. It's, it's great sick. to have you, Trev.